What's going on guys, Today Gaming back with another MLB The Show 20 video and today we're doing something very special. Today we're doing my top 100 in MLB The Show 20. Now this is going to be a big video. There's going to be 5 parts where I'm going to be counting down my 20s every single time. So we're going to... It's gonna end with 20 to 1, but today we're doing 10 to 81 in today's video. I've ranked so many cards in this game, and I am so, so, so excited to share my list with you guys. But before you do, this video in this whole series is gonna take forever for me to do. The list took me a while to make. It's gonna take a while to edit because I want this to be very similar to MLB Network's Top 100 right now. I kind of want it to be kind of that sort of vibe. So please hit that subscribe button and leave a like. Best way to support me by far, and I'm putting a lot of time into this video, these this whole video series. So that really helps out a lot. So. Basically, it is going to work like MLB Networks. I'm going to go down. I'm going to talk about each player for a little bit. I'm probably going to show some highlights from some YouTubers. I'll leave all their links in the description that I use. So, yeah. Without further ado, let's go into number 100. Number 100 is 99 overall Devin Williams, the finest card from the Milwaukee Brewers. And at 99, we're sticking with the Milwaukee Brewers team. 99 overall Robin Yalman. At number 98, we got 99 overall Mike Schmidt, the Phillies CH3 team affinity card. The first starting pitcher in the top 100 is going to be 99 overall Walter Johnson. At 6, we got 97 overall Matt Kemp, the prime card. One of the older headliners in this game. Six. Six. Off the foul pole. Coming in at number 95, I got the Eric Thames card that you get from the Prestige XP Reward Path. Number 94, we got another big hitter in 96 overall tops. Now, Jordan Alvarez. Third big batsman in a row. We got Eloy Jimenez. This finest card, 98 overall. Look at that. We got another slugger. 97 overall, Jesse Winkers. Well, dead center field. That ball was killed. At number 91, I got 99 overall. Jeff Bagwell, the Astros Stage 3 Team Affinity. Now we got Mark Canna. This 97 overall card is one of the best BR goons in the entire game. Coming in at number 89, we got 99 overall. Max Scherzer, one of the better starting pitchers in the game. And Coming at number 88, we got 99 overall MVP Johnny Bench. Number 87, I got 97 overall Cody Bellinger. 86, I got 99 overall Cattell Marte. Switch hitting finest card. Here we go Crochet, gonna start the inning off with a strikeout. At number 85, I got 96 overall Garrett Crochet. Number 84, I got the player program MVP Cal Ripken Jr. Springer. He's going to get into one. We're going to start the game with back-to-back -back bombs. The trash cans are doing well. At number 83, I got one of the most underrated cards in the entire game. 99 overall postseason flashback, George Springer. Coming in at number 82, I got 98 overall gold glove, Yadier Molina. Putting out the part of today's list, I got 98 overall player of the month, Aldoberto Mondesi. He's so good in this game. He's like two doubles. Three homers. He is so good. We get the lead. Let's go. Travis Darno. At number 80, I got 99 overall postseason. Travis Darno won. Number 79, I got 99 overall Miguel Cabrera, the signature series from the player program. Coming at number 78, I got Kevin's boy. 99 overall Eddie Matthews. Coming at number 77, I got 99 overall finest DJ LeMahieu. At 76, I got 99 overall player of the month flashback Carlos Carrasco. But at number 75, I got 98 overall Hal Newhauser. 74, I got the prime mini Minoso from the XP reward path. He's just gonna whiff right through that fastball. One out. Coming in at number 73, I got 99 overall Cy Young Clayton Kershaw. At 72, another guy from the XP reward path. 99 overall Ryan Samberg. Number 71, I got young Carlos Santin from the postseason program. Gosh, maybe we should have started him instead because he just hit an absolute nuke out of here to make this 11 to 4. At number 70, I got another postseason card 99 overall, Steve Pierce. At 69, I got 99 overall, Anthony Santander. At 70, I got Mr. October Red, Mr. Reggie Jackson, prime card, another XP reward path, and I think he is the best out of that main XP reward path pack. 
Uh, he just absolutely rakes. I used him, and he was a, just a beast, to say the least. He's not a good fielder out there in right field, 68 fielding. And he's, I mean, he has good speed as well, but he's, Reggie Jackson is in there, of course, for his elite bat. Very good stats, a very clean left-handed swing, and he destroys right-handed and left-handed pitching coming in at number 68. Coming in at number 67, I got 99 overall Lefty Grove, his signature series card. Now, I do think this card is extremely underrated. He was in an event that only lasted for like a week, so not a lot of people have him. But he is still a very, very good card for the people that do have him. He, of course, has outlier on that fastball. And he's got some of the... He's got a bit of a weird pitch mix. But besides that, he doesn't have any cutters or sinkers. But he absolutely throws gas with a curveball, forkball, changeup, and slider. Great pitches. He's extremely difficult to hit. That fastball comes in super quick. And it even seems like it cuts a little bit. Very good velo, very good break, maxed out stamina, hits in case Ryan are great and very good control. One of the most underrated and best pitchers in the entire game coming at number 67. At number 66, I got 99 overall Buster Posey. Again, I think this card is really good. I personally did not have a whole lot of success with him. At first, when I used him, some of that success, some of the stats are from later usage of him. But he is one of the most elite catchers in the game, definitely top five. Even though he's honestly not one of the best in my opinion. He's got great fielding behind the dish. Pretty good speed. At, pretty good speed. No, I mean, for at least for a catcher. But the thing that sets me away from this card is his swing. I hate it with every ounce of my body. I just wasn't able to figure it out. But if you can figure out the swing and, he, and he's facing a lefty, he is going to demolish. Those lefty stats are, of course, great. Righty, not as much, but he is still a force to be reckoned with. The key with Posey is, of course, his swing. But he, if you figure it out, one of the best cards in the game at number 66. At number 65, I got 99 overall Jackie Robinson. Now, some people might call me crazy for this one, but I feel like this card played way above his attributes, way above his power. He was a great hitter. Great speed, of course, at and he can play quite a few positions. Every infield besides shortstop, and he can also play left field. Great vision as well. I played really well with him. I mean, a three, bad at 348, had 15 home runs. He was really, really good. And, like, this was a very underrated card. A lot of people did not really want to get it because his uh, evolution program was an extreme grind. But I think it was worth it. He's one of the better hitters in the game, one of the most underrated cards in the game. Player program 99 Jackie Robinson comes in at number 65. At number 64, I got 99 overall Stan the Man. He can play every outfield spot plus first base. Not going to do it with great fielding though, but Stan the Man's in there for his elite bat and maxed out contact. And great against, he's actually a very opposite hitter. He destroys lefties better than he does righties, but he is still a righty threat, of course, with great vision. This card is just really, really underrated, and he's honestly a really good bench bat because he can demolish lefties as long, with, as long as righties. He plays above that power. This is one of the best bench bats in the game, and even if you, you play him at first base, he is still a force to be reckoned with. Staying the man comes in at number 64. There we go, Nolan. Way to get him. At number 63, this card doesn't get the love it deserves, but 99 overall Nolan Ryan. This card is extremely underrated in the beach ball pack. He, I feel like he just got overshadowed. I don't know why. He just got cast away and forgotten about. But he is really, really good. Of course, he has outlier on both that sinker and that uh, fastball. Very good case for nine. Great. The only problem with Nolan Ryan is, of course, his control. But if you can figure it out, he's just so good. Great break, great velo, great hits for nine, great stamina. I personally have some pretty good success with him. I actually, in the Bellinger event at, at Coors Field, may I add, I actually threw a perfect game with this card. And he, he's just been really good for me when I have used him. That's why Nolan Ryan is coming in at number 63. At number 62, I got 99 overall Andre Dawson, the National Stage Street Team Affinity guy. And I feel like this card, again, does not get the love it deserves. He's very balanced hitter, not extreme numbers, not 
the contact's barely above 100, so is the vision, and the power, neither power makes 100, but the fielding out there is incredible, 93 with 97 arm strength, plus 85 fielding, and he's got one of those nice swings, and if you can figure it out, it's very, very smooth, and it is very, very good one. I personally used him a couple times in some all-time team builds, and he was a beast. I do think this Andre Dawson card is one of the best better outfielders in the entire game and when you face him or if you use him he can still be an extremely glitchy card that plays above sitting attributes and gives you great fielding and great speed out there coming in at number six He's gonna go deep and put us up one nothing doing what he's been doing these entire Christmas countdown and hitting bombs Rounding at today's section of the list, we got 99 overall JT Rimuto. A lot of catchers on today's list, and a lot of them are very elite. This one, it, the stat attributes look a little bit weird, weird on the hitting side. He's got good contact against lefties and not great power. He's got great power against righties and not great contact. Nonetheless, he's still a very good fielder with 91 arm strength. And he also has 75 speed, which is incredible for a catcher. I used him in some team builds, and he absolutely went off about almost 500 with him half his hits were home runs this card plays way above his attributes and he has a very nice right hand swing very similar to his last year's finest in that he's a very good catcher and should be very well respected Into it. coming in at number 60 i got 99 overall mvp bryce harper this right fielder is one of the best sluggers in the game of course he's got that sweet swing pretty great stats against righties i should say pretty good against lefties the vision isn't great the fielding isn't great but he has a good arm and pretty solid speed out there in the outfield pretty solid card bryce harper of course has that nice swing harper coming in at number 60. at number 59 i got 99 overall carlos correa the postseason card uh, this card is a very underrated one. You think you see it a lot, but you actually don't see it a lot, but you should. I, I mean, I know that made no sense, but he's got diamond fielding, 97 arm strength, and he's got great hitting stats. Everything except the power versus left, he's above 100 with 90 vision as well. Of course, not the best speed in the game, but doesn't matter. He's still an absolute beast at shortstop. One of the best in the entire game coming at number 59. At number 50, I got 99 overall player of the month, July reward, James Paxson. This flashback card is one of the better starting pitchers in the game, and he is, of course, very, very usable for most Diamond Dynasty squads. Great stamina, and he's, I, if I had to say one word about this card, it'd be balance. This card is extremely balanced. None of these stats, like, stand out a ton. Only one's above 100, but they are all in the upper 90s, except for control. Velo and break is still good. The pitch mix is pretty good with that cutter kind of acting as a slider and a sinker. Of course, fastball, knuckle, curve, and changeup. One of the best left-handed starting pitchers in the entire game coming in at Stick baby! Nelson Cruz off the bench is gonna go big fly, and we're up three to two in the 11th. At number 57, I got the Twins' finest card, 99 overall, Nelly Cruz. Of course, max out stats against lefties, and is pretty good against righties as well. The vision isn't great, the fielding is horrible, uh, good arm strength, and the, but the speed is horrible. Of course, Nelson Cruz isn't in there for his speed speed or fielding he's in there for his bat and he's one of the best bench bats in the entire game and even if you stick him out in your outfield he's not going to provide much defensive value but he will still hit absolute tanks at number 57 at number 56 i got 99 overall prime ty cobb an inning boss reward i forget exactly which one i think it was the seventh inning doesn't matter mac he's got max out contact on both sides with 90 power on both sides and 114 vision Pretty good feeling out there, just a tad below 90, but his arm is kind of a bit of a noodle, and of course he's got maxed out, maxed out speed. He's also got pretty good bunting ability, so if you want to be a little cheesy, you can use Ty Cobb to that full advantage. And he's a pretty solid hitter as well, even if you don't want to cheese the system with his speed and good bunting. He's still a very solid hitter, 90. Of course, he's got that 90 power and maxed out contact. Coming in, Coming 55, in. we got 99 overall player of the month, Jose Ramirez. One of his two 99s and the only one appearing on today's list. He's got maxed out against lefties and stats against righties aren't really anything special. With pretty good vision as well, he does destroy lefties. 
I personally suck with them because I hate Jose Ramirez in this game. But anyway, he's got 84 fielding with 80 arm strength and 61 speed, but he has a ton of versatility. He can play everywhere in the infield plus left field. Ton of versatility for an absolutely lefty destroyer, and he's a switch hitter. Of course, coming at number 55. That's a good curveball, Cy Young. Been scoreless since the first inning, and we're coming in at number 54. I got 99 overall signature series, Cy Young, a division series award, and you may call me crazy for this pick, but I think this card is extremely hated on for no good reason. He's, shoot, I dropped my controller. Anyway, uh, max out stamina. He's got good stats. Everyone's saying pitch mix, terrible. It kind of is, but if you know how to pitch it correctly, he can be very effective. Personally, I've been okay with him in two starts, but you gotta know how to use this card. You gotta use a lot of low stuff. And if you play the right guy who will chase the low stuff, he is just incredible. He's one of the best pitchers in the game if you know how to utilize him, utilize him correctly. Cy Young coming in at number 54. Rounding out our three Shea Indians, we got an IA overall signature series, Bob Feller. Another of a uh, kind of forgotten. This one, this card was a little bit more forgotten about because he's a BR Flash Award. Nonetheless, he's still incredible. Almost maxed out Ks per nine. Great hits per nine. Of course, that control was not great, but maxed out Velo, maxed out break. He is outlier on that fastball. Also has a sinker, two seamer, slider, and changeup. And I feel like this card is extremely underrated, mostly because he's a flawless reward, but Anyways, he's still a very good card. He can pump gas, plus that off-speed stuff is pretty good as well. And he has a sinker. Bob Feller coming in at number 53. Coming in at number 52, I got 99 overall MVP Josh Donaldson. Another BR Floss award that is forgotten about a little bit. Not as much as Feller, though. This card is very good. 100 on every single hitting stat. 82 vision as well pretty good fielding pretty good arm strength and 52 speed and i mean there's not a whole lot to say about this card besides he's just good there's i mean there's no two ways around it he's just a good card he's a solid hitter a pretty good defender he's an overall well-balanced good card there's not much more i can say that's why he's coming in at number 52. Coming in at number 51, I got 99 overall signature series craig biggio the american league collection award of course uh, 100 power on both sides and about 80 power. I meant 100 contact on both sides are just about 80 power with 100 vision. He's also got good fielding and, of course, great speed. And a lot of people use this card as a catcher, even though he can play left and center. Of, of course, second base is primary. He's pretty good defensively behind the plate. His speed is, of course, really good as well. I personally did very well with him when I did use him. He is a very, very good catcher behind the dish. Craig Biggio coming in at number 50. One. Halfway through the list is 99 overall signature series Billy Wagner coming in at number 50. Of course, outlier on that fastball slider curveball change. I'm not the best pitch mix. Nonetheless, nearly maxed out hits in case for nine with maxed out velo and break. He's got good control, maxed out pitching clutch, and great walks per nine and great home runs per nine. This card is one of the best stats in the game, and he's got a funky lefty delivery, and he's, of course, a BR Flash Award, so not a lot of people have him. Doesn't matter. He is still an absolute beast. One of the best closing pitchers in the entire game. Coming in at number 50. Coming in at number 49, I got 99 overall Pudge Rodriguez, Ivan Rodriguez, the gold glove card from the 9th inning program. I think it was 9th or 10th. Anyway, he's one of the best defensive cards in the entire game. 97 fielding behind the dish with 99 arm strength and 98 accuracy. He's also got 68 speed, which is pretty good for a catcher. Good contact, good power, good vision. One of the best catchers in the entire game. Top three catchers in the game. He's a good hitter. He's a great defender, phenomenal defender, and he's got good speed for a catcher. I used him, and he did pretty well for me. So, Padre Rodriguez coming in at number 49. Oh, Freddie Freeman did Britain dirty lefty-lefty crime. That ball was destroyed. Coming in at number 48, I got 99 overall Freddie Freeman, one of the most slept-on first basemen in the entire game because of how good that position is. Doesn't matter, he's one of the best right-handed hitters in the entire game, and he can be pretty solid against lefties as well. I did use him for a few team builds, and he absolutely raked to say the least. His OPS was high, just really high, anyway. 
103 vision. He's also got 92 fielding over there at first base, and you can pluck him over at third base, and he will still be a great defender. With 44 speed, Freddie Freeman, absolute beast of a hitter, and he's got some good fielding stats as well, coming in at number 48. Coming in at number 47, I got Extreme Reward Christian Yelich. This MVP card is one of the best hitters in the entire game. Of course, look at that sweet left-handed Christian Yelich swing. Plus 100 on all the major hitting stats with 77 vision. Not going to be a great defender out there. 78 fielding with 72 arm strength. But he does have pretty good speed, just below 81 tick below there. I used him a few times, and he was, of course, very successful, like most of these guys. Yelich just absolutely rakes. There's no two ways around it. He, he's a left-handed absolute slugger in your outfield coming in at number 47. At number 46, I got 97 overall. A rule just Chapman, in my opinion, the toughest lefty to hit in the entire game. Max out hits in case per nine. Max out velo and break. Max out pitching clutch. Home runs per nine is great. Of course, Chapman's main issue is his control. Doesn't even matter most of the time. All you got to do is throw that 102 mile an hour fastball right by him. He's got outlier on that fastball and that sinker. He also has a two seamer as well, as long as the slider and change up, which you can, which you can mix in, and people are going to be whiffing through them because everyone's sitting on the, of course, the 102 mile an hour heat from Chapman. One of the best relievers in the entire game. Probably the best lefty reliever in the entire game. Come in number 46. Hornsby. That's gone. Let's go. We get two right back on two pitches by Framber Valdez. Coming in at number 45, we got Rogers Hornsby from the beach ball pack. Maxed out contact. Great power. Great vision, great discipline, great clutch. He's one of the best hitters in the entire game. He just flat out rakes his swing. Is of course great as well. I used this card and I loved him and I still love him. He's still on my bench. Of course, his fielding is going to be phenomenal at first, second, or third. Anyway, he's just in there for his bat. We're not worried about his defense at all. He also has pretty plus speed. Rogers Hornsby, one of the best hitters in the entire game and one of the best second basemen in the entire game. Definitely an end game second baseman. He just flat out rakes at 45. Coming in at number 44, I got 99 overall Bob Gibson. You get him from a conquest map, and he is a free card to acquire. And for a free card, he is an absolute beast. Maxed out Sam, though. Great hits in case for nine. Great velo and break. Great pitching clutch and great control and great home runs for nine. And his pitch mix is pretty good. Four seam slider, sinker, curveball, and changeup. I have used him. He does not have outlier of any sorts. I have, I've, for me, that's good. I'm not a good pitcher in this game, and I have had quite a lot of success using Bob Gibson, one of the best free cards in the entire game, and one of the best starting pitchers in the entire game, coming in at number 44. Coming in at number 43, another quote-unquote free top arm in the entire game. 99 overall future stars, Nate Pearson from the Extreme Program. This card, as you guys know, throws absolute gas of course he has outlier on that fastball very basically the same pitch makes as billy wagner and as a starter it isn't as effective but at, in the same time it is more effective as he's one of the best starters in the entire game you can get someone to whiff through that fastball you are going to be set for the entire game using nate pearson great his in case for nine stamina isn't a great for a starting pitcher but he's still going to give you six solid innings Great velo and break maxed out. Pretty good control as well for a flamethrower. 78 home runs per night isn't the greatest, but he is still an absolute beast coming in at number 43. Coming in at number 42, I got 99 overall Rich Goose Gossage. Another top reliever in the entire game. He's got pretty good stamina for a reliever at 41. Almost max out hits in case per nine. Max out velo and break. His control is not incredible. Home runs per nine is though. And control is really the only issue with this card. The pitch mix is, of course, spectacular with outlier on that fastball, sinker, serve, and changeup. He is just an absolute beast of a release pitcher, one of the best righties in the entire game. Of course, he was an event reward from the postseason program, the postseason event, I'm pretty sure. But, I mean, and not a lot of people have this card, but doesn't matter. He's one of the best in the entire game, and there's just no ignoring that fact coming in at number 42. 
Rounding out today's portion of the list, I got Prime 99 overall Honus Wagner, I believe, from the eighth inning program, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, one of the best contact hitters in the entire game. 90 power on both sides with great vision. He's also got great fielding. 90 plus if you play it. He's got diamond if you play him at shortstop. Plus 90 arm strength. And of course, 95 speed, 98 ceiling. He can play everywhere in the infield. Plus left field. This card has a ton of versatility. He's a great hitter. Very good overall balanced card he's got good fielding great speed great hitting and he can play a bunch of different positions one of the best well-rounded cards in the entire game 41 honus wagner like that I think. Castellanos. Absolute bomb. the other way and now we have the lead oh my gosh that pitch was obliterated at number 40, I got Player of the Month flashback, Nicholas Castellanos from 2019, one of the best sluggers in the entire game. And he's pretty versatile, even with not the best field. He can play first, third, and the corner outfield spots. Destroys lefties and his great stats against righties as well. With pretty okay vision, he's also got 61 speed. One of the best hitters in the entire game. He just rakes, to say the least. He's got a very nice swing. I used him and was he was pretty good for me. Not great, but he was pretty good. And it doesn't matter. He's a beast. You throw one mistake pitch to this card, and he's going to destroy it. Nicholas Castellanos coming in at number 40. At number 39, one of our final relievers on the list. I got 99 overall Kenley Jansen, the signature series card from the 10th inning program. Actually, I think it was the 9th inning program. The 9th inning program. He's got 121 hits per nine and 125 Ks per nine with maxed out view and break. This is very similar to his signature series card from last year. He's got a cutter, slider, sinker, changeup, and fastball. And I do think he is not quite as good as last year, but he is still a force to be reckoned with. Great control, great home runs per nine, great pitching clutch, great hits and Ks per nine. You can locate with this card and hit your spots. He's an absolute beast coming in at number 39. At number 38, I got Fidus Chain oh, Beaver from the Cleveland Indians team affinity now this card may not have the best pitch mix but his stats are incredible 120 125 hit, hits and cage per nine and those are incredible for a starting pitcher with 112 stamina pretty good control pretty good home runs per nine with great pitching clutch it's just incredible the break is also maxed out velo is only at 74 and he throws a four seamer knuckle curve cutter slider and change up doesn't matter the stats on this card are absolutely insane, and he can still play pretty well for you as a middle-of-the-rotation type of starter. Shane Bieber coming in at number 38. At number 37, I got 99 overall Cy Young, Tom Seaver from the All-Timers program. Almost max out stamina, good hits in cage for nine, great control, good home runs for nine with maxed out pitching clutch. He's also got 93 break and 83 velo. There's a four-seamer slider, Four seamer sinker slider, 12 6 and change up. A really good pitch mix. I have personally not liked using this card, but I have faced him, and when I face him, I have just I just struggle to hit him. And he can still t sometimes be effective for me when I do use him. Tom Seaver coming in at number 37. At number 36, I got 99 overall Gary Sheffield from the National League collection at the beginning of the year, live series collection. Of course, Sheffield is not gonna bring a whole lot of fielding, 65. It's of course, he got 91 arm strength, so that kind of makes up for it a little bit. Not a good fielder, but Sheffield is there for his bat. He absolutely rakes. I use this card, and he was just a flat-out beast. His swing can be a little hard to get used to, but once you get used to it, he hits tanks, especially against lefties. He's got good vision, good stats against righties as well, and he's got pretty decent speed for a right fielder. He can play the two-corner outfield spots plus third base to get rid of that pretty awful fielding. If you want, you can stick him at third, and he'll perform just good. And that's why he's going to come in at number 36. Coming in at number 35, I got 99 overall silver, silver slugger, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., one of the most forgotten about cards in the entire game. He is a World Series award, so that stuff tends to happen with them. His stats against lefties are just insane, nearly maxed out with good vision as well. And the stats against righties aren't bad themselves. Of course, Vlad has a pretty great swing as well. He's, again, like Sheffield, not good fielding, only 70, but 98 arm strength. Vlad has a cannon and 73 speed, and he's got a very, very nice right-handed swing. You can play everywhere in the outfield. Vladimir Guerrero Jr., one of the best hitters in the entire game. At number 34, we got 99 overall Jim Tomei. 
who is one of the best right-handed crushers in the entire game, and one of the best first basemen in the entire game. He destroys right-handed pitching. I love this card when I used him. He just hit absolute tanks. He's got a nice swing as well. The vision is not great. The fielding isn't great as well, but it doesn't really matter. He's at first base. And the speed isn't particularly great as well, but he is a force we reckon with that, with that bat. He plays against his, above his lefty stats. He destroys righties. Jim Tomey coming in at number 34. At number 33, I got Gold Glove Roberto Alomar, a flawless reward. Now, this card may not look good on paper with the hitting stats. Of course, the fielding stats look incredible. 98 fielding with 85 arm strength at second base, plus 83 speed and 94 steel. But his swing when I used his 91 was incredible. I haven't used his 99, but when I used his 91, it was an absolute beast with that swing. And he plays above his attributes. He just hits tanked. One of the best switch hitters in the entire game, Roberto Alomar coming in at number 33. At number 32, we got another great switch hitter in the form of Francisco Lindor, the finest card you get for the collecting. 30 cards in the finest program. He's got 99 fielding if you put him at shortstop with 81 arm strength, 73 speed. His hitting stats are incredible against lefties, and they're good against righties as well. Like Alomar, he plays above those hitting stats. He just hits tanks. I used him a couple times, and he was okay, but doesn't matter. Francisco Lindor, I've seen him. You make one mistake to this pitch, and he's going to clobber it. And when you use him, he's going to clobber for you. you got a really nice left switch hitting swing. He plays above his righty attributes. Good field and good speed. Roberto Al... Not Roberto Almar. Francisco Lindor coming in at number 32. At number 31, this may be a little bit shock to you guys, but 99 overall finest Tim Anderson from the White Sox. This card, in my opinion, is slept on. He is a good hitter. He is a okay fielder, and he's got pretty good speed. I feel like they were kind of generous to him with his fielding, and he's more effective as a second baseman, in my opinion. Those lefty stats, of course, are maxed out, and those righty stats aren't bad as well. And, I mean, great great speed, of course. The fielding will be manageable if you put him at second base. And when I used him, I haven't used him, actually. Versus CPU, I did use him a little bit, and he just got base hit after base hit. And I've seen people use him, and I've seen him at break for people. Tim Anderson coming in at number 31. At number 30, I got 99 overall Casey Mize, Future Stars future stars flawless reward now this card came out a while ago and he is still effective to this day i'm recording this and probably will be for the rest of the year his stats are very balanced all of them in the upper 90s except for home runs per nine he doesn't have the greatest stamina but his pitch mix is pretty elite four seamer cutter splitter slurve and a sinker Splitter kind of works as a changeup. The slurve works as a slider. Sinker and cutter are both great as well. I've seen people use this card. I've seen him be great for them. He's got, even though his attributes may not pop off the board but like some of these guys, he's got a great pitch mix and he's very effective with it. It's Casey Mize coming in at number 30. And Tatis, that should be a tailor-made double play. One, two, we got him. Moe's going to roll the double play. Let's go. At number 29, the final lever on today's list is 99 overall Mariano Rivera the Signature Series card. In my opinion, the best closer in the entire game. Maybe a biased Yankees fan with that. But nonetheless, great hits in case Brian, great control. It is through the roof. Great home runs, Brian, great pitching clutch, great velo and break. So it's a cutter, four seamer, sinker, slider, and changeup, a great pitch mix. And he's got pretty good stamina. Mariano Rivera is just um, one of the most dominant closers in the entire game. He is just a beast coming in at number 29. At number 28, I got 99 overall silver slugger Mike Piazza. Another World Series award and another quite forgotten about card, if I'm being honest. This card should get more love, in my opinion. The, I mean, I'll know a lot of pe I know a lot of people do not have him, but he should get more love for being one of the best unobtainable cards in the entire game. I know the fielding isn't great. I know the speed isn't great, but he's got a really nice swing, and he does a lot with it with maxed out against lefty and insane stats against righty as well with 100 vision. Mike Piazza isn't going to give you sour defense behind the plate, but what he is going to give you is a plus bat that can rival some of your outfielders in this game. Mike Piazza coming in at number 28. At number 27, I got 99 overall Frank Thomas, another big bat in this game. He just destroys lefties, as you guys should well know by now, max out against lefties. He is a, just a lefty crusher. Good stats against righties as well, with just on the brink of 100 vision. 
His fielding is pretty horrible over there at first base, but he plays like a gold glover. That's just Frank Thomas. He has just about 50 speed, which is average, but everyone knows Frank Thomas is in there for his bat. And when I used him, he performed. He was pretty good. I know that's a very small sample size. Seven at bats, three hits. But he still performed. I loved his swing from this year and last year. Frank Thomas is just a lefty crusher off the bench and in your starting lineup if you want to use him at first base, coming in number 27. <laughs> Get that one home run perfect perfect. I guess the first home run I've ever hit with this card. We're gonna go up one nothing. At number 26, one of the best shortstops in the entire game, 99 overall MVP Ernie Banks. Now this card isn't gonna be stellar for speed like some shortstops, and he's not gonna be stellar for defense like some shortstops, but he is going to be stellar for his bat. 125 contact against lefties with 102. He matches them, of course, and he matches righties as well with good vision. I used him a couple times. He wasn't perfect for me, but he did get the job done when he needed to. One of the best hitting shortstops in the entire game. Ernie Banks, there's no other way to say it, but he flat out rank, rakes coming in at number 26. At number 25, arguably the best hitter in the entire game, 99 overall, Randy Arozarena, postseason card that you get from completing the World Series program. Of course, 125 on every stat against power versus lefties, and it's still 112. And he's got 98 vision, and he does have pretty good speed and fielding, both at 84 out there in left field. And, I mean, Randy Rosen, you can easily make a case that he's the best pit hitter in the entire game. The only case that you can go against with this card is that he does not have a stellar swing. But even with not a good swing, his card still has incredible attributes that cannot be ignored. That's why Randy Rosarina coming in at number 25. At number 24, we got Big Poppy David Ortiz Silver Slugger card that you get from the fifth inning program. One of the, probably the best inning program in the entire game. Of course, David Ortiz is going to be known for one thing and one thing only, and that he is, is his bat. He is just going to absolutely destroy everyone with it. He's a stellar hitter. He plays way above his attributes. I used him, and he rakes. Uh, the fielding, of course, isn't going to be great, and the speed, of course, isn't going to be a great. But there's only one thing that you have to say about David Ortiz to convince people that he's good, and that is he's a slugger coming in at number 24. At number 23, we got another straight-out slugger, 99 overall Ted Williams, another really forgotten about card in this game that, once again, because he's a World Series award, and he's very similar to Randy Rosarena. Really great stats, of course, on the hitting side of things, and that's really all he's going to do. If Ted Williams is going to rake, he's got good vision, he's got almost max out contact, he's got great power, of course. The fielding isn't good. The speed is not good. But Ted Williams is in there for his absolutely massive bat. And that, in my opinion, even though I haven't used this card, I used his signature series last year. I think that outshines the fact that he's not a great defender out there. One of the best lefty sluggers in the entire game coming in at number 23. At number 22, we got 99 overall Chipper Jones, a flawless reward, but people will remember this card for sure. He's an absolute slugger, one of the best switch hitters in the entire game, and people just don't stop talking about the Chipper Jones card because he is a beast. Despite the bad fielding, not stellar speed over there at third base, Chipper Jones, and, and he doesn't even have the greatest hitting attributes, you can argue. Only one, not a single hitting attribute besides discipline, which doesn't really matter goes above 120, but he plays way above those attributes. He's got a beautiful swing. I used him in three at-bats. He got two hits. Little BR run there. He just rakes. He plays way above his attributes. He's got a beautiful swing, as everyone in the MLB show community knows. Plays way above every single stat he has, except for maybe the fielding, at least on the hitting side of things. He plays above his attributes. Doesn't matter. Chipper Jones rakes. Coming in number 22. At number 21, rounding out today's portion of the list, we got 99 overall MVP Albert Pujols. Another not extremely obtainable card as he is a World Series award, but still, he just destroys baseballs. That's what Albert Pujols does. Hitting stats are fairly balanced, but they are slightly favored towards left-handed. But even the right-handed stats are stellar, of course. And he's got pretty good fielding over there at first base, 85. And if you play him at third, he still give you gold fielding. 
with 56 speed a lot of people don't like it what the people don't like about this card is he has a little toe tap in his swing and it's kind of weird for a lot of people which is why he's kind of down here at number 21 he probably would be up higher if he didn't have that but nonetheless one of the best first baseman in the entire game one of the best sluggards in the entire game coming in number 21 Coming in at number 20, I got 99 overall finest Trevor Bauer. In my opinion, one of the most underrated cards in the entire game. People don't give this card the love it deserves. Really good hits and caves for 9. Pretty good walks per 9 and pretty good control with maxed out pitching clutch. Great velo and break as well. And good stamina. This card has some pretty filthy pitches as well. Four seamer, that cutter acts like a slider. I mean, it kind of just acts like another fastball, but much slower than the four seamer and sinker. And then, of course, he has a slider and knuckle curve. The only real flaw with this card is no changeup. But besides that, that cutter is one of the best pitches in the game. I have such a hard time hitting it because of the massive speed differential between it, the slider, between it, the slider, and the fastball. It's just such a massive speed differential. It throws me off every single time. Trevor Bauer coming in at number 20. At number 19, I got 99 overall Larry Walker from the fifth inning program. One of the best hitters in the game and one of the biggest surprises in the game as he, this, he wasn't announced as a, legend, as a new legend at the beginning of the year. He was announced in the middle of the year when he came out. And what a good surprise he was. One of the, he's got elite defense out there in right field. He's got great speed and he can hit like heck. Just like crazy. He's an absolute slugger. He's a five tool player in general. He plays above his lefty power he's got pretty good vision he's got good stats overall there's not much more to say about this card besides his great stats i mean you can use him now and i'd consider him a four speed racking with does have a little bit of a weird swing nonetheless he's still absolutely raked and can play the defense well and has good speed larry walk coming in at number 19 at number 18 i got 99 overall lou gehrig from the extreme program one of the best hitters in the entire game and another kind of forgotten about card that you it's kind of, it's kind of a trend on this list there's a lot of good forgotten about cards lou gehrig is of course forgotten about because he's part of the extreme program and not a lot of people have him but he is still one of the premier sluggers in the entire game a uh, really great contact, really great power, great vision. He's got pretty good speed over there at first base as well. Not great fielding, but doesn't matter. He's a first baseman. Lou Gehrig is going to be in there for his extreme bat, and he produces with that extreme bat. Coming in at number 18. Coming in at number 17, I got 99 overall signature series Chris Sale, World Series reward. One of the best starting pitchers in the entire game. Probably the best left-handed starting pitcher in this game. He's got good hits in cage for nine. He's got good velo and break. And of course, Chris Sale has that really weird delivery. And especially against lefties, it is extremely hard to hit. His control is also really, really good with good stamina. Four seamer slider circle change and two seamer. May not have the best pitch mix, but he has one of the most funky deliveries in the game. He's got very good sidearm. And if you're facing him with a, le a lefty stacked lineup, you're going to have some serious trouble hitting Chris Sale coming in at number 17. Coming in number 16, I got 99 overall MVP Babe Ruth from the Alzheimer's program. Very similar to Lou Gehrig, one of the best sluggers in the entire game. But I feel like Ruth outshines Gehrig by a little bit. He just rakes. There's no else to say with it. I used him and I loved him. One of my favorite cards in the entire game. 32 home runs, 66 RBIs, 344. He just smacked baseballs out of existence. He's got a very nice left-handed swing. And you can even stick that pretty crappy defense at first base with this card, which gives him an extremely added bonus. Babe Ruth, one of the best cards in the entire game, one of the best hitters in the entire game, I should say, coming in at number 16. At number 15, another extreme slugger, 99 overall postseason, Corey Seager, you get from completing the entire World Series program. This card, at first, when I first used him, I didn't really like him, but he has grown on me more and more, and he's gotten better and better as he's gone on. He has, actually has reverse splits where he's better against lefties, but he still mashes righties as well with good vision. And now, at shortstop, he's not going to be a good defender, which is not a good thing at shortstop. But you can luckily stick him at second or third base. So you can keep that power bat in your lineup. 
but you can kind of ignore the bad defense. Corey Seager, I used him. He just flat out rakes one of the best hitters in the entire game coming in at number 15. Coming in at number 14, in my opinion, the best catcher in this game, 99 overall finest Salvador Perez from the Kansas City Royals. Now, his splits may seem weird at first, and at first, I wasn't extremely excited about this card. But after I see pe saw people use him and I tried him out for myself, he was an absolute beast. I just, I love hitting with this card. I'm adding 444 and half of his hits are home runs. I love using this card so, so much. He's got great power. He's got good contact. And he's kind of has those weird sits like splits like JT Rumuto where he's got good good contact, better contact against righties and better power against lefties. Doesn't matter. He can destroy both sided pitching and he's pretty solid defense behind the plate. Not going to give you a whole bunch of speed, but in catcher, if you get a really great slugger that competes with your outfielders, that's all you can want out of him. Salvador Perez coming in at number 14. At number 13, I got 99 overall Cy Young, Justin Verlander. At first, his fastball Vila wasn't good. It was at like 96. And a lot of people are like, really? 40 wins for this card? But they fixed it. 99 Velo, actually, not 97 Velo, but he threw the throw 90 my, my, 99 miles an hour with that fastball. And he is just a beast. He's got great stamina, great hits and caves per nine, great control. Some home runs per nine are pretty low. Doesn't matter. He's got a great pitch mix. Four seamer, 12 six, change up slider, and two seamer. I mean, even though he doesn't have like a sinker or a cut or anything, this card is still extremely effective and is one of the hardest cards to hit in the entire game and if you were able to grind out the united states of baseball event you were luckily rewarded with this extremely rare to get card and one of the best in the entire game justin barlin are coming in at number 13 at number 12 i got 99 overall mvp jimmy fox another extreme slugger in the game and you can stick this card at catcher as well i can play first third and catcher does that mean I think he's better than Salvador Perez as a catcher? No, but as a card, yes, he's better than Salvador Perez because of that better bat. He's a better catcher, but he's a better hitter than Salvador Perez. He's a better overall card. Anyway, he's got good speed. Fielding is not good at 72. If you play him in either third or first, it's going to dip at third or catcher i mean it's gonna dip below 60 but doesn't matter jimmy fox hits nukes nearly max out contact with 116 and 113 power 90 vision doesn't matter jimmy fox has got a beautiful right-handed swing and just destroys baseballs into outer space jimmy fox coming in at number 12 at number 11, I got 99 overall Mookie Betts. Now, this is a little bit of an interesting pick, uh, in my opinion, and some of you guys in the comments may disagree with this pick, but hear me out on this one. He destroys right-handed pitching. You all know that. Mookie destroys righties, and he can be effective against lefties as well, depending on the lefty. Most of the time, he isn't going to be great against them, though, but the extra boost, extra boost, why he's at number 11 is because of that feeling. 99 fielding if you play him any of the secondary positions he's still going to be a diamond and he's 95 arm strength also can play second base every outfield spot in 72 speed as well mookie betts is one of the best hitters in the entire game he's got a very nice swing in my opinion mookie betts is just destroys right hand pitching and he can be sneaky good against lefties as well and he's one of the best fielders in the entire game you don't run on mookie Moogie Betts coming in at number 11. No doubt out of here. We're going up 1-0 with a Bronx Bomber home run from Mickey Mantle. Kicking off the top 10, someone who's been here since day 1, 99 overall, Mickey Mantle, the MLB collection reward. He still, to his this day, is an absolute Beast switch hitter can play everywhere in the outfield. 87 fielding, 94 arm strength, but 92 speed. And he's got great power numbers, great contact numbers, and good vision. He is just an overall balanced and extremely good card. The only downside to this card I really massively am seeing is his swing is not a really great one. But if you figure it out and you figure out how to use Mickey Mantle, he will be the most productive card in the entire game. And if you prestige him, it's put him in center field he'll give you diamond defense mickey mantle one of the best cards in the entire game balance incredible coming in at number 10 
At number 9, we got the kid, Ken Griffey Jr., 99 overall MVP from the 10th inning program. The only boss in that, because they, MLB, the show, 20, just said, you know what, you're going to pick him anyway. It doesn't even matter about the other two. So, let's talk about the guy that is the most important boss in the game, in my opinion. He is just a righty smasher. 114, 125 against righties, and he's really good against lefties as well. Even with those not so great lefty numbers, he can still destroy them. He is just an absolute beast of a card, and as everyone in the game knows, he's got that beautiful, beautiful Ken Griffey Jr. swing. Every single time he hits his baseball, it is just so pretty, dude. And, of course, he's got 96 fielding, so wherever you play him in the outfield, he's going to give you diamond defense, plus 94 arm strength, and he also has 85 speed to go along with all of this great stuff. Crank Review Jr., another all-around, really balanced, incredible card coming in at number 9. At number 8, we got the best third baseman in the entire game, Manny Machado. Now, this card may not at first be incredible i mean the hitting numbers are great of course the fielding numbers are great the speed isn't exactly spectacular and you would hope from the top 10 to have good speed but machado is a de great defender over there at third base and no matter where you put him in a secondary he will give you diamond defense in 99 arm strength and when you're facing a lefty with manny machado with Manny Machado, he is just going to hit tanks. I love using this card in my lineup, and he has done very well for me. One of the best hitters in the entire game. One of the best fielders in the entire game. Not great speed, but the hitting is great. The fielding is great. You can ignore the speed for once. He's got good vision. He's got good at basically everything. Manny Machado coming in at number 8. Coming in at number 7, another OG card. We got 99 overall, Cordy Kluber, Cy Young, from the XP Reward Path Level 75 pack. And everyone in this game knows about Cordy Kluber. Great hits in case for 9. I mean, the stats, if I'm being honest, aren't spectacular for this point in the year. He's got pretty good stamina, pretty good hits in case for 9. Velo isn't great. The break is really good, of course, as the control is as well. And the home runs per 9 aren't good either. But this card just was effective. There's no denying how good Corey Kluber was when he was on the mound. Sinker, slurve, cutter, four-seamer, and changeup. He played above his attributes. Everyone may have agreed for the first five months of the game, was the best. he was the best pitcher in the entire game. Even five months into the game, facing him for like the 30th time, he was still hard to hit. He's always been a good card in this game. From the very beginning, he was unhittable. He's become more and more hittable, but he is still a difficult card to hit. One of the best starting pitchers in the entire game. Coming in at number 7. First set bat on the first pitch he sees. Launches one to give us a 2-0 lead. I missed this card. Coming in at number 6, we got 99 overall finest flashback, Cody Bellinger from the United States of Baseball event. Now, once people saw this card, it was in the game, he was actually teased, quote-unquote teased. I'm sure people, the SES accidentally put him in the game. But he was later revealed to be in the event, and people grinded their heads off for this card, as did I. And he was worth the grind, without a doubt. I love using this card. Of course, he has that beautiful, beautiful Cody Bellinger swing. He can play everywhere in the outfield with diamond defense if you play him at right field. And, of course, 99 arm strength. He also has great speed and that hitting. He's got amazing power, good contact as well with good vision. Now, it is a bit of a waste if you have to put him at first base. It kind of wastes that defense. But even then, he still is a massively good slugger in your lineup and he's a good really good speed as well for a great power bat Co cody bellinger coming in at number six let's go we're gonna get griffey swinging on that one pudge please throw it to first he will want two down not one down two down at number five the final starting pitcher on today's list 99 overall finest jacob de from the new york mets one of the hardest to hit fastballs in the entire game and he's 
it's from a starting pitcher. 103 stamina, 110 hits per nine, 125 caves per nine. Also has 88 walks per nine and 89 control. He's got good control, even though he, of course, has that outlier on that fastball. Four-seamer, slider, changeup, curveball, two-seamer. Not a great pitch mix. No sinkers, no cutters, but it doesn't matter. He is one of the best pitchers in the entire game, and I think he is the best starting pitcher in the entire game. Great velo, great pitching clutch. Case per nine, maxed out. Jacob deGrom is an absolute beast on the mound. He throws gas. Fastball is always hard to hit no matter what difficulty you're on. Hall of Fame, All-Star, Legend. Jacob deGrom is one of the best pitchers in the entire game coming in at number five. Absolute bomb off Lucas Giolito. Wasn't even really on that. He just has so much power that he got it out. At number four, I got 99 overall player of the month for Nando Tatis Jr. Probably one of the best shortstops in the entire game. Probably the best infielder in the entire game in general. Now, this card, great power, great contact, great fielding. 90 fielding at shortstop with 95 arm strength. Has a gun out there, plus 84 speed. Fernando Tatis, of course, in the month of August, everyone, he was on fire. He was the best player. Uh, he's the best player in August, and it wasn't even close. And this card reflected that. I personally didn't have a whole lot of success with it, but I have his prestige. He is just incredible. I mean, 300, even with that batting average, I still had an OPS over 1,000. He is still a beast every time you face him. He's got a beautiful right-handed swing, of course. Very clean. He can go oppo on you. He can pull a home run. He can go dead center. You got a perfect perfect for Fernando Tatis. Bad things are going to happen for the other team coming in at number four. We are down to our final three cards. And at number three, we got 99 overall MVP Willie Mays World Series reward. And one of the best cards in the game reflected by the fact he's at number three. Well, first, let's talk about his defense. 98 fielding, 95 arm strength, 97 accuracy, 95 reaction. Also, it's 94 speed out there in the outfield. That is elite on its own right, but they, we're not talking about his bat even yet. He is one of the best sluggers in the entire game. Of course, got a little bit of a weird swing. Nonetheless, he is still an absolute machine. 125 contact, 118 contact versus lefties. 111, 118 power, 107 vision, diamond defense, anywhere you put him with Great arm strength and great speed. He's going to track everything down out there in that outfield. And he's going to give you a home run when he steps up to the plate. One of the best cards in the entire game. It's not even debatable. Despite a lot, a lot of people having this card because he's a World Series reward, it doesn't matter. Willie Mays is elite. Coming in at number three. Let's go, we turned on that sinker and we get the lead right back. Soto Bomb, best hitting card in the game. Coming in at number two, one of the, probably the best hitter in the entire game, and it's not even particularly close. 99 overall, Juan Soto from the Washington Nationals. This card, flat out, best hitter in the game. I said it. Max out contact. M nearly maxed out power, only six power points away on the righty side of things from being maxed out all hitting stacks except vision, and he has a hundred of that as well. Of course, we take a look at his fielding and speed. It's not good. 75 fielding, 71 arm strength with 53 speed. Does that matter? Absolutely not in this case because Juan Soto has the best bat in MLB The Show history. It's debatable, but it, you can make that easily argument. So that's why he's coming in number two. He's just a slugger. I loved using this card when I did have him. He's got a great swing. Swan Soto is just a freaking beast with that bat coming in at number two. And now we're going to finally reveal the number one card in all of MLB The Show 20. We counted down the top 99 before him. Let's talk about the best card in MLB The Show 20. <laughs> Let's go, Trouty Boy. Best card in the game is going to go deep and tie this ball game up. He's almost a guaranteed hit every single time he comes to the plate. Two to two ball game. New hits 
a nuke. What a really bad changeup, I'll be honest. Is this a surprise to anybody? The best card in MLB The Show 20 is 99 overall collection reward Mike Trout for the Legends and Flashbacks. If you disagree, I don't know what to say. This is my opinion, and I feel like this is a not even a close choice. Mike Trout, one of the, he's the second best hitter in the game behind Soto, and he gives you great speed and defense. What else can I say? I use this card for 314 at bats, and I'm betting 450 with him. 450, and 300 at bats. I love this card. You know, he hit 40 home runs, OPS of 1,300. Want 276 total bases. I can drool over these stat lines all day, but we're not going to do that. I know my stats with him are impressive, but even for people who aren't great at the game, he's still amazing. He's just amazing. I can't say much else. The stats at first, the hitting stats at first may not jump off the board, but he plays like everything is 125 on both sides. It's just incredible how he does this and how this card is this good. He's got a beautiful swing this year. Play everywhere in the outfield. You know, give you diamond defense. 89 arm strength. He also has a hose. Plus 90 speed. This card is everything at once. Plays above the hitting attributes. Great fielder. Great speed. Mike Trout coming in at number one. If you did enjoy this big collection effort... To count down the top 100, I would really like it if you liked and subscribed. That is the best way to support me. 100 to 1. Mike Trout is number one card in MLB The Show 20. I'm United Gaming. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.